morning. Happy Mother's Day. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 9th, 2021. Today's guest speaker is Shane Donnelly, son of Sherry Donnelly, and weekly pre-records our services to put online. I will return to the pulpit next weekend. Featured in the service is Handbell Tapestry with bell ringer Sue Garden and Becky Sofer on the keyboard. This coming Thursday is Ascension Day, May 13th. There will be a 7 p.m. service followed by a social hour. Handbell Tapestry will perform on the Ascension. Also, the new metal roof on the church structure is completed. We await the restoration of damages due to the fire. The church council will meet on Tuesday, the 18th of May at 7 p.m. It is good that you are with us. Enjoy your day. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm certain I'm not the first one to tell you today is Mother's Day. And what we're going to do for our message, we're going to look at famous portraits. A portrait is a picture of a person, of mothers, made by their children. And very famous is Whistler's mother. Just like you whistle, the last name of this artist is James McNeil Whistler. And this is his mother. And here is a photograph of her from long ago. So we have some idea as to what she looked like. Now he became very famous in Europe. He was schooled at an art school in Russia. And then he was traveling across Europe and in London and his father died. And the family were having some hard times financially in the United States. So he told his mother, she's up in years, you come to England and I'll help take care of you. Well, he needed a model and the model never showed up for his painting and so his mother said that she would do that, she would help him. Just like your mother helps you for your homework, he, his mother would help him. Well, he did several copies of this before his last one and his mother was standing. And when you're a model and you're standing, you sometimes have to stand for many hours and you can take a break. And his mother was kind of old and he knew that. So he said, Mom, 
why don't you sit down? And he put her in a chair. Sometimes people think she was in a rocker. No, it was a chair. And he did this painting and it received an immediate attention, became very highly recognized, and it is in a museum in Paris. And here is the original painting in Paris. You can see the size, almost life size. And here is the son, James McNeil Whistler. And he made this painting of his mother. Another very famous painting is called Saying Grace. One of the most famous Americans of all times who was a painter is Norman Rockwell. And Norman Rockwell did covers for a magazine called the Saturday Evening Post. And the Saturday Evening Post, Saying Grace, this is regarded as the most popular of all his hundreds of paintings. This painting recently was sold for $46 million. Now, if you look at the illustration, it appeared at Thanksgiving. This was the magazine for Thanksgiving. It's a restaurant, there's a railroad yard, and there's different people in the restaurant, and everybody stops what they're doing because the grandmother has the grandson, and before they eat, we're going to have a prayer and thank God for our food. And some people thought, well, isn't this strange that you would do that publicly in a restaurant? But the grandmother who was raising this little boy, she thought it was very important that wherever we are, that we thank God. So here we are thankful for a mother, a grandmother, who is helping to teach her, her grandson about God and Jesus and being always thankful. So very, this is a very famous illustration by the American Norman Rockwell. We're going to look at one other very famous mother. This is called the Madonna of the Streets. Now Madonna means mother in Italian. Now when you look at this painting, People think of Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus and baby Jesus. Actually, that was not the intention of the artist. The artist was an Italian by the name of Roberto Ferruzzi. And he was an attorney, he was a lawyer in Venice, but he loved to paint. And he was out on the streets and he saw a teenage girl holding her brother. And he liked he liked the way she looked, and here a big family, many children, but an older sister was helping her parents to take care of the baby. And he said, isn't that nice? And he got permission from her parents to come into the art studio, and her name was Carol Turin. And she, the family later moved to America. But this painting was entered in an art exhibit in Italy well over a hundred years ago and people said well doesn't it remind you of Mother Mary and baby Jesus so it became connected with Mary and Jesus and appears on Christmas cards but that was not the plan of the artist but it reminds us that sometimes we have like a sister in our family somebody who is not our mother who becomes like a mother to us, like this girl was to her little brother. She helped to raise him, she babysat him and took care of him. So our, our mother can be the woman who gave us life. Our, our, our grandmother can be very involved in our life, also a sister. And these are the people that we, we are remind, reminded of on Mother's Day, all the women who help take care of us. And we are always grateful and I want you to remind yourself of the women who are so good to you. And the card that I'm giving you for Mother's Day has the painting of the Madonna of the Streets. And inside, I'm giving you a sachet. It has a, a nice fragrance to it that you can give as your gift. And this is what the card reads. I think your mother or your grandmother will like it. A prayer for you on Mother's Day. 
God bless you this Mother's Day with happiness and peace and with his many wondrous gifts of joy that never cease. Happy Mother's Day. So you enjoy your day with your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your aunts, and all the people who are a big part of your life. Thank you. Scripture verses we will be using for the Mother's Day message. First beginning in the Old Testament with Proverbs 31. I am reading from the New International Version Bible. The Sayings of King Lemuel Proverbs 31, beginning with chapter 1. The Sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprived all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish, let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Epilogue, the wife of noble character, beginning with verse 10. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, no harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works eager with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her arms, she cares to the poor she extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders, elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Our second reading comes from John chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, the miracle of turning wine into water. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do what he tells you. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. It is uh, an honor to be here again 
to bring a very special Mother's Day message to everybody. I'm always amazed of how comfortable I feel when I have an opportunity to stand behind this pulpit. As I was thinking and preparing a message, hoping and praying that I could deliver something that would touch the congregation in a special way, I was doing some thinking. And I started to think about of all the things that people may say about me, or all of the titles that I've had, out of all the things that people may call me, and I've had a lot, Sean, Kane, Zane, even Jane, and others that I would not repeat in church or really don't want to think about, my favorite thing to be called is dead. When we think about molding young minds and teaching kids and those around us, well, it is so frustrating. It is crazy hard, and it is amazing. All human beings are born to be parents in one way or another. Men setting out to be dads, women setting out to be mothers. Now keep in mind, these rules may not be parental in the traditional sense. Trust me though, everyone born into this world at one point or another has had a mom or dad moment. It's time to back the men out of this message though. Father's Day is still a few weeks away. Today is Mama's Day. Mother's Day. A time to reflect, a time to celebrate, and a time to give thanks. Yet, for some, today is sad. Thinking about or dealing with the pain of losing a mother or even struggling to have a child. For today, we are going to work hard to push through. Work past the human emotion and pain, and we're going to lean on the Lord for His perfect plan for our lives. Today we're going to celebrate all the women of this church, all the women in our lives, and praise God for the beauty, the strength, and the resilience that He bestows on our mothers, both traditional and non-traditional roles. As I hinted a moment ago, Every woman sitting in a pew in this church or watching online is a mother. Regardless of the family structure, you have instincts and strength to care for children and others around you in a manner that most men, or not many men, understand. Each one of us has been blessed with a mother who has cared for us in a special way. Everyone has different circumstances or relationships and experiences, yet one thing is true. The relationship with our mother has touched our lives and molded us in a special way. Moms, today we celebrate you and give praise for the mothers in our lives, for the work you do, how you teach, and the care you provide. In our scripture reading this morning, we discussed two particular readings that I think fit Mother's Day very well. Our first reading in Proverbs focused on motherly wisdom and the many qualities surrounding noble wives and mothers. Our second scripture took us back to Mary's role in the first miracle that Jesus performed as he turned water into wine. My prayer is that we are able to use these scriptures to show God's favor on the women in our lives, the characteristics that the Lord bestowed, and the importance of mothers in developing faith and serving God. I tried to come up with a title for today's message, but I did not want to limit the message by a title. So instead, we will take this topically. 
Today we're going to spend some time looking at a mother's wisdom, the characteristics of a mother, a mother's love, and then we'll close out with a Mother's Day prayer. So let's begin with wisdom. Wisdom is defined as the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. In Proverbs 31, King Lemuel is quoting what his mother taught him. And it's relatively long, so we can assume that she told him more than once. King Lemuel is quoting his mother and sharing her wisdom with us so many years after it was delivered to him. To the women in our church and women in our lives, how often do you think about the impact that you are having on those around you? Moms, how many times do you think your words, suggestions, or actions are going unnoticed until you hear someone tell you how you have impacted them or tell you what a special person or child has said or done? I've seen this a lot in my life. I have watched my wife have in-depth conversations with our children around the importance of not passing judgment when forming relationships. I have watched my wife befriend people in the checkout line of Dollar General and invite them to church. I have seen my wife hug strangers inside of sheets after they tell her about a sick relative as she invites them to Bible study. Sometimes wisdom is passed on without even saying a single word. I had to laugh. As I was thinking and praying about this sermon, I had a story pop into my mind. I just gave my wife so much praise, and now I'm going to poke a little fun. My wife is not a very big fan of Chick-fil-A. It's not that she doesn't like the food, she just doesn't understand why so many other people like it so much that the drive through has to have handlers or the parking lot fills up so much that it interrupts other traffic. And if you know my wife, you know that she is very vocal about her thoughts. And she is vocal about her thoughts on Chick-fil-A. Now my kids, on the other hand, they love Chick-fil-A. In fact, I'm willing to bet that my kids would wait in line for an hour to get their hands on those tasty little nuggets of joy. But the funny part is, when you think about, do my children pay attention? The other day, as I was driving with my son, we passed a busy Chick-fil-A drive through And I hear from the back seat a little voice say, I don't understand why there's so many people in that drive through line. Jeez, it's not that serious. Mothers, you have more impact than you think. I have watched my son and daughter grow up with huge hearts. They stand up for those in difficult situations and provide a shoulder to lean on for those in need. Why, you might ask? I believe it is because they have seen the size of their mother's heart and paid attention to the wisdom that she has shared. Wisdom is based on past experience. It's the knowledge, that good judgment that we share. It amazes me to think about how our mind works and, and how memories form. A lot of times, they're kind of through shaky experiences, and maybe we even create them ourselves from stories that others have told us or thoughts that we have. I bring this up because I was just thinking about something my mother shared with me in my early adult life that has always stuck in my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not easy to live with. I have always had a gift of gab, a lot of sarcasm, 
I can get cranky sometimes and maybe I think I'm a little funnier than what I really am. But imagine trying to raise a child who got kicked out of Ewing Park in Elwood City by the police, not for doing anything wrong, just hanging out with their friends. And his response to this atrocity was to gather a couple hundred signatures and write a letter to the editor of the Elwood City Ledger about the police harassment that he had seen. Or having the same child pick up on the fact that you said bog docks instead of dog box and not being able to let that go for a couple weeks. Or the same child coming home from college one year to find out how the Christmas tree was balanced. I have to share this story. We had an artificial Christmas tree we put up every year. And the very top of the Christmas tree had a post that slid down into the base. And over the years, the hole got a little bit bigger, and the base didn't want to sit directly straight with the top of the tree. So essentially, the top of the tree always wanted to lean forward. I came home from college to see the Christmas tree standing perfectly upright because my mother had found an idea. She needed a counterbalance, something to lift the tree back. So out of creative ingenuity, she found herself a piece of string, some tape, and a can of corn. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a can of corn and a piece of string is what held our tree up straight. Of course, I could not let that go and have not let that go, even to this day. All I'm trying to say is that I'm not an easy person to live with. But I learn a lot in talking with my mother and the patience that she has shown me. I remember I was sharing a difficult situation, having something happen at work, and I was not happy about it, and I was telling her how I was going to the very top to see this through. I was going to get this injustice resolved. But in a loving motherly tone, she told me, that there are lots of different ways to go about resolving conflicts besides running into a burning building with a flamethrower and bazooka. She didn't say it exactly that way. In fact, it sounded nothing like that. She simply said, Shane, the flag bearer gets shot first. You don't always have to be out in front waving the flag. Sometimes you have to consider your other options and think through how you go about things. Interestingly enough though, it was not too long ago that we were talking and she said to me, Shane, it's like you always say, the flag bearer gets shot first. It's interesting to me that she attributed that comment to me because the reason she has heard me say it so much is because I heard it from her first. In a similar manner, Lemuel is reciting the wisdom his mother passed on to him. The first nine verses his mother shared with him the meaning of judgment and justice. She may have used some different wording, but her point is that power can cloud your mind. You may find yourself leaning away from the truth and justice if you spend your time worrying about others who do not have the strong morals you do. She warns that liquid spirits may make you forget about the laws and those who are oppressed. She reminds Lemuel the importance of sticking up for those in need. Wise words indeed, as each of us are challenged by the Lord God Almighty to love those around us. And our mothers strongly encourage us along this journey through their wisdom. Let's remember the wisdom that God has blessed mothers with and thank God for all that we have learned through their experiences, their knowledge and sound advice. Without this guidance, we certainly would not be who we are today. When we take a moment to dig a little deeper into Proverbs 31, we get into a section that Lemuel's mother provides some characteristics of noble women 
wives, and mothers. Let's take a look at some of these characteristics as I paraphrase, or pull out just a few to highlight. She works with eager hands. She provides food for her family. Her arms are strong for the task. Her lamp does not go out at night. Mothers never get a day off. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She cares for her family and keeps them clothed in the cold. She is clothed herself with strength and dignity. She speaks of wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of the household and does not eat the bread of idleness. What a perfect description of a mother's strength. Think about the love, determination, and the patience it takes to pass on these kinds of lessons to the world. I've always kind of viewed my mother, my wife, my grandmothers, my aunts, kind of as superheroes. And their superpowers are way too many to list, but allow me to give a couple. I'll begin with the superpower of giving birth. I have to be honest, I get a little bummed out after a meal if I'm not feeling well and I'm a little gassy. I can't even imagine what it feels like to grow a human being inside of me, let alone deliver. And if it were up to the men of the world to birth the child, best believe this world would not have the same population that we do today. To the men listening to this message, you can do two things with that last statement. You can argue with me, or you can acknowledge the truth, and we will move on. But the verses that we heard talks a great deal about caring. A noble wife or mother cares for her family, for the poor and needy, cares for and about faith, and cares for family affairs. A mother cares. Mom's superhero power number two is the ability to care for the family selflessly, regardless of the situation. If we're being honest, things can go south relatively quick. And it seems like illness tends to strike a family at the same time. Never fear, mothers are here. I think about a time when my mother was taking very good care of me, and I recall this was a time that she had her wisdom teeth out. Needless to say, my mother is absolutely hysterical coming out of anesthesia. I couldn't understand a word that she said, but I'm pretty sure she wasn't making sense regardless yet she still tried to cook dinner for me. I've seen my wife battle through COVID and still taking care of me and my son. Meanwhile, I was a giant pal of sickness melting in bed. Our mothers just have a different gear. Another layer of love. Kissing boo-boos and inventing new ways to teach and keep children and those around them engaged entertained and incredibly cared for. I was thinking about how mothers will care for you and love you even when you don't make any sense. I was reminded of a story from college. I was having a conversation with some friends. We were talking about our futures, having families, and discussing how hard it was going to be to take care of children and everything that went along with it. And as we talked, all the daily duties coming out, I made a simple comment, which was, well, at least you don't have to wash your baby every day. And a friend recalled to me and said, Donnelly, how often do you think you have to give a baby a bath? And my answer was, I don't know, every two or three days? I mean, they really don't do much. Well, they did not agree with my answer, and I did not agree with theirs, and as we laughed about it, 
and we were having fun, I thought, you know what, I have the cool mom, so we're going to settle this. I'm going to give her a call. So picture this. It is 12.45 a.m. You are dead asleep, soundly having dreams, and your phone rings. You are awakened. You roll over, find the phone, and answer, Hello? And the first thing you hear is, Mom, how often do you wash a baby? Now what she should have done was hang up the phone or call the insurance company to see how much counseling would cost, but not my mom. There was a couple moments of silence. I could almost see her brain turning. And then the question, Shane, are you having a baby? No, Mom, we're having a discussion. But thanks to my mother, both of my children have had regular bathing schedules and have always been clean. Mothers were blessed with so much strength. Strength to care and love, the patience to guide, the determination to make a difference, even when the situation is difficult or very early in the morning. Praise God for the strength of our mothers. My final topic today really zeroes in on the love of a mother, and it brings us to our section on John. Mary had an extremely difficult job. She was chosen to be the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can you truly wrap your head around the weight that that would carry? How do you mother the Savior of the world? What can you teach the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? In our final scripture today, we are taken back to the first miracle that Jesus performs. As we heard, when Mary prompts Jesus to perform his first miracle, Jesus replies, It is not my time yet. My time has not come. At the same time, his mother helped to facilitate this first miracle and therefore jumpstart the ministry of our Lord and Savior. Oh, the wisdom of a mother. The ability sometimes to know what is needed and exactly when it is needed. Sometimes a mother just knows what you need. If I may have one more superpower, let's look at the superpower of knowing and reflex. It's kind of like the child who argues with their mother and as they walk out of the room they roll their eyes and the mother says, don't you roll your eyes at me. How do they know? Let's talk about reflexes. Ladies, think about this. You were driving a vehicle, maybe you were with a friend, a child, maybe even your husband riding in the next seat next to you. But you're driving and someone pulls out in front of you and hits their brakes. What do you do? I call it the mom seatbelt. And no one had to teach you that. It's a mama instinct passed down from generation to generation. And this seatbelt is inherently a mom thing. And I can prove it. I was driving home from the store with my wife, and we were having a good old time laughing and chatting, and all of a sudden, a deer jumps out in front of us. What's my reaction? It wasn't the mom seat belt. Sure was not. As my wife fell forward when the brakes were hit, instead of gently putting my arm across her chest, I reached out and grabbed the hood of her sweatshirt and pulled back. Great move, Donnelly. Way to choke out your wife and potentially break her neck. The good news, it wasn't a super violent situation. Or that definitely could have ended badly. I have seen many women in and around my life with the uncanny, uncanny ability to help drive their children in the right direction. So many times the best nudge that a mother can do is to pray. Pray for, pray with, pray in spite of. My mother tells me that she prayed me through college, and I'm sure glad she did. My wife and I have taken this wisdom and pray through our children through their schooling. 
In addition, we pray with our children. I've seen my wife forehead to forehead with our children praying. I have had phone prayers and in-person prayers with my mom when we were up against difficult times. Moms have the ability to just know what to say and how to say it. Just like Mary knew, it was time for Jesus to begin his ministry. He knew it was not quite his time, but yet he honored his mother and conducted his first miracle. Praise God for the motherly reflexes and the ability to know what we need to do to be at our best and to follow the plan God has laid out for us. I feel like we've only really scratched the surface here this morning. My prayer is that somehow I have captured something that has honored the mothers in our church, the mothers in our lives, those who are with us or not with us today. I pray that you have thought about a time where you were impacted by your mother or a time that your mother has, as a mother has impacted someone else. God bless the women in our lives and praise God for the gift of motherhood. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed on our lives. We praise you for the salvation we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of our mothers. We thank you for the strength, the wisdom, and the reflex that you have bestowed on them. Lord, we honor the sacrifices, the selfless nature, the nurturing, and the love we receive from our mothers. We pray that you will continue to strengthen the women, the wives, and the mothers of this church and those around us. We pray that you will foster appreciation, love, and respect for the wives, mothers, and ladies in our lives. We give thanks for the scripture and the wisdom you have provided for us to use as a basic for, basis for today's message. May all of our mothers feel loved and honored today. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.